It's the end of the world as you know it. Do you feel fine? Tonight the apocalypse gets deep, fat, fried! Deep, fat, fried! Just joking, guys. Tonight's actually the top ten paint drying things. Oh, I, thought, I, I thought we were doing top ten hottest babes, too. Oh, yeah. We never did. You know what? We never did hot, hot, you know, top ten hottest uh, intersex people. Oh, yeah. Gen- uh, or gender fluid people. I'm, o- I'm only here because I got a lot got, of top you ten guys promised me. To go. You guys both promised me some drugs, so... Or, Scotty, are we, are deep, we doing something else? Deep fat fried is a drug yeah. unto itself, Okay, Scotty. So, you, so what you're saying is you lied to me. Take you, a big fat toke of deep fat fried, Scotty. Oh, yeah, that deep oh, fat shit, fried man, flavor. Oh, shit, man. Uh, I don't, so I don't, high. I don't only feel high, so, mm. I, you know. Well, it doesn't affect everybody, I guess. All right, well, fair enough. Fair enough. I'm here anyway, so I guess we'll do this fucking show. I've been waiting for this show. I'm so glad that TJ's stupid, like, oh, let's ogle tits and asses and dick shit is over. That dumb that idea. That was your idea. That was your what, idea, Paul. Whatever. You guys are just, the, 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 once, once Paul, again, the, the Kirk fucking, blockade. The, the John you know Cena I mean? of deep fat fry. The fucking <laughs> Kirk blockade <laughs> happening here. Yeah, I see what's going on. Whatever. Okay, my terrible fucking idea to ogle booties. <laughs> is uh, but This is what I really get this off This is a to. high This show, is what Paul. I stroke my meat to, right? The fucking extinction of the human Ooh. race. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I, I think we can't, uh, ad- you know, address. We're gonna get into some specific scenarios here, but um, you know, I, I think we need to address the fact that for you know, for us, at least me and Paul, I don't know about Scotty, I don't want to speak for him, but you know, you shouldn't. There's an upside to this whole you know apocalypse thing for sure. It's oh, like, oh yes, right. oh yes, yes, it's all upside. There's nothing but upside to the apocalypse. It's like ah. It's well, I think the I think the first thing finally we should specify is that you know we, we have we we're not gonna talk about all the apocalyptic scenarios. Uh, we're limited to this one to like natural and admi- we're limiting it. We're limiting this episode to the plausible. Will there be another episode, perhaps for patrons only, that talks about some other? Fucking scenarios. Who knows? Yeah, oh, you have to be Who a patron to find out. Yeah, only patrons can know such things. But tonight we're talking about the things that might could happen. Yes, yes, that's true. And the, and natural, not shit man-made have, shit. Yeah, the, the shit. there's some plausible ones there as yeah, well. Man, yeah, we're avoiding man-made shit. Uh, we're supernatural, avoiding supernatural shit. We're just sticking with uh, natural. Ways that the world could plausibly end. Maybe there's yeah. maybe there's some that you know mankind could or m- might or might not have a hand in, but uh, you know nothing that y- nothing that's just definitively like World War Three or some shit. There's nothing like that in here. Nope. This is all just mom fixing it. Yeah, this is all. Mom's just- gonna fix it all soon. Mom's coming round to put it back the way. In Arizona I Bay. Day. Arizona Bay. Yep. Oh, yeah, that Bill Hicks slash Tool reference. Yeah, dude. Coming at you real hardcore. I failed We're to, fucking I smart. Failed, like, nobody has ever given me a downside to just the scouring of the face of this planet. Like, not one that really matters, you know what I mean? They're like, but what about the beauty? I'm like, but what if we're, if we're not around to experience the beauty. The beauty don't matter, does it? I mean, isn't the fucking, what's wrong? Is a molten ball of fucking de- spinning death not beautiful in its own way? I guess I guess you're right there, too. Yeah. Depends on your perspective, doesn't well, it? Well, I mean, also, yes, you have to factor in that it might not mean that all all life is gone. Just humans are gone. Right. Yeah. So, there's probably a light. There's probably other light. We got a big ass universe. There's probably other life forms. I mean, elsewhere. so I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine, dude. Why are we so special? Why can't we end? You know, everything fucking has a beginning and a middle and an end. And you know, maybe we're closer to the end, or maybe it's a while away. Who knows? Oh Who man. Fucking knows, Fingers dude. crossed. Fingers crossed every day. Oh man. Come on, you piece of shit world. End. Paul's the crab boy. Oh man. I, I check every every day when I. Get get up i immediately check the news i want that Luke headline fly? i want that headline that says like giant world killing object spotted by <laughs> telescope the end is nigh paul's like ah, i don't have to do dff anymore <laughs> yeah, it's over it's, it's over done. thank fucking god just hope all my enemies die 
slightly before me so I can see them die. I always think, you know, it'd be funny <laughs> if this should happen and Paul was like... Because you know Paul would at least freak out, dude. It, it, it would be funny because Paul, even though he'd be like, I yes. Mean, well, we all have survival instincts. Well, yeah. Yeah, I know. But, it would be, it would, but dude, I would want to be around Paul right, right as the end was coming if, I, if it was possible. Because I'd be like, happy now, Paul? Happy now, Paul? And then watch Paul be like, oh, my God! <laughs> No, I'm the, I'd be I'd be a very quiet, solemn individual. I'd be I don't staring think so, up at Paul. the stars, I, man. Knowing you, Paul, I don't think so. One last moment of consciousness. Paul would just be like, <laughs> "Yes, sweet embrace of death." Be funny if the the asteroid was like, "Whoa, they're into this," and then just kind of like I'm, it swerves away I'm from Paul. Dude. I'm like, "No, come back, come back!" <laughs> I barely knew thee. Paul goes on like a murder rampage beforehand. Or I know. Something. I'm just yeah, like, Paul, nothing matters anymore. Yeah, Paul just gives it every dark fucking desire he's ever had in his life. He just rapes and burns rapes and pillages. Rapes and burns and pillages. Steals. Nothing matters anymore anyway. Ah! It's like that's with the Twilight Zone, dude. Asteroid misses. Oh, shit. It's like, Uh-oh. I'm going to get my comeuppance now. Oops. Yeah, dude. I'm saying we have that allegorical shit, dude. It'd be like, you know, where they in the, in the Twilight Zone where they break into the neighbor's house because he's got a bunker and shit. Paul will be those people. He'll be doing whatever he has to survive, and then he'll just be like, nope, never mind, I don't Paul. think no bunker is protecting you from an asteroid impact. Oh, dude, I ain't trying. Like, I know, and I've watched enough movies and shit to know not even to go to that bunker because I know what kind of slaughter is going to go yeah, on dude, inside go, that don't go to the bunker. Fuck, don't go to the bunker, dude. I know that the lucky ones die on the surface from starvation or radiation poisoning or some shit, you know what I mean? Dude, fuck that. Just blow your brains out at that point. I mean, yeah. who, who even gives a shit? The asteroid's about to hit, and you don't want to fucking deal with, like, the best case scenario being like, you get to fight for survival in an apocalyptic wasteland. It's like, just kill yourself. Like, how is that considered survival, being trapped underground with a bunch of assholes? It's like, nope. No, 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 no. That's a different kind of death. <laughs> What if we were? What if you were trapped underground oh, with the uh, ten recipients of our uh, hottest women list? Well, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I end up in that bunker, you're fine with that one. So, uh, although, since we're talking about an asteroid, let's talk about that one first. Sure. So this is from um, Ask an Astronomer. Yeah, uh, it's a Cornell um, web page. Uh, this is what would happen if an asteroid ten kilometers across hit the Earth. Beginner. beginner that's definitely us yeah we're beginners we don't know much we about need, this we need the preschool stuff. version of this yeah look it's nice and short i can fit the whole thing on the screen okay i understand it's beautiful Ooh, yeah 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 being stupid is awesome i'm glad to be we stupid. don't gotta read as much yeah hey, look at that it was only a couple paragraphs there yeah. <laughs> oh shit for an asteroid 10 kilometers in diameter i just wish i knew what a fucking kilometer was that's the only downside some here. foreign shit i don't know some weird f- unit of measure how many miles in diameter is it yeah what is that it m- speak english it doesn't matter where it hits ocean or dry land uh, remember that the deepest point in the ocean is the marina trench which is only 11 kilometers deep also a typical speed for meteorites is around 30 kilometers per second that's kind of fast I think an Uh, asteroid 10 kilometers across is so massive that it's very hard to slow it down. Unlike small meteors, it will not be slowed down much by air friction. Yeah, it's just going to tear right through that shit. It will punch through the atmosphere like it's hardly even there. When it reaches the surface, it will smack so hard that it won't matter if it strikes ocean or land. I mean, I don't really agree with that because it'll matter a little bit, right, depending on where you are on the planet. If it hits the ocean, you might die in a tsunami rather than a fireball. If you're like a surfer, you might just be waiting for that. This is going to be the (laughs) ultimate wave. (laughs) Hang 10 on the apocalypse wave. (laughs) Haven't they done that in one of these stupid movies? They probably. Have, if they dude. haven't, hey, look, they can't even. This is Cornell University. They can't even spell impact. Whoa, dude. The Emma Pact. The oh. Emma Pact. Zero credibility with me now. The Emma Pact with the Earth's crust will finally stop the asteroid. The energy of the impact will vaporize the asteroid and a large amount of the Earth's crust, creating a crater uh, more than 100 kilometers across. I, I think that's why it's irrelevant if it hits in the ocean or uh, if it's land. Throwing it's, all. Yeah, I think all the. I think if it did hit the ocean, all the water. Uh, 
around it would just be vaporized. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's sure. going to matter anyways. Uh, throwing all that rock into the air. Some of the debris will be going so fast that they'll fly right out of Earth's atmosphere and go into orbit around the Earth. Most of uh, the debris will rain back down on Earth, every part oh of the Earth. Oh, my God. So we're just talking like, so it's going to throw up a bunch of chunks of shit into the atmosphere. It's going to be rain. So, so it's just going to rain, rain dude, fire. For rain us, fire and boulders dude, and shit. That's why it's one of humanity's biggest achievements to have actually left the orbit of this planet because it's so difficult for for an asteroid to hit to actually throw a rock into space is just like mind boggling. Uh, here's another. Here's this is a fun part too. Uh, every part of the Earth, not just near the impact site, uh, will be heated up. It'll heat up the atmosphere, so you'll be like it'll be like inside. You'll be it'll be like being inside an oven. It's going to trigger forest fires and cook anything that isn't sheltered underground. Wow! Uh, <laughs> oh my god. So the com- Cuban kebabs, dude. God damn, can you imagine the buffet, though, if you were underground when you came out afterwards? Yeah, dude. Dude, it would be like the best barbecue that you've ever been to. Just hang out underground by, like, the Brooklyn Zoo or something. Yeah, in a bib and- with a fork and a knife. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting. Paul just pops out. <laughs> just get out There's of there. There's some lion. Just be like, ooh, yeah, elephant. Oh, ooh, right. a, rare, oh, a rare white uh, uh, a rhinoceros, the last one in captivity. <laughs> hmm. Nature's most amazing potluck starts now, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. We have been waiting for this day. <laughs> um, uh, the combination of dust from the impact and soot from the forest fires will remain in the Earth's atmosphere for a year or so, blocking out the light of the sun. Without sun, much of the Earth's plant life on land and in the sea will die. Wonderful. Many species of animals, including the human race, if we aren't both lucky and resourceful, will die out, either in the initial catastrophe or the ensuing years due to lack of food and general devastation of the environment. The last time this happened was 65 million years ago. That's when they, you know, when it killed the dinosaurs. Yep. And that's, uh, that created the Chicxulub? Chicxulub. Chicxulub crater in Mexico. I knew it was the fucking Mexicans, man. And yep. causing the extinction the of the dinosaurs. On average, an asteroid this size strikes the Earth every 50 to 100 million years. Kind of sounds like we're due. We're, we're overdue. I mean, by the, by the liberal estimate. Damn. By about 15 million. So Cool, dude. Yeah, that's good. That shit's probably going to hit tomorrow. It's crazy. Thank goodness. Let's take a look at the uh, the crater here, because I know we pulled that up, too. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this is the the one that killed, what killed the dinosaurs. I'm not going to read this dense shit. Is there a good picture of it? I mean, I guess. Uh, they want to see the fucking. I mean, you can't really see it anymore, because it's, it's just, so, it, it's, most of it's under the ocean. It's too big to even see. Yeah, I can see that. Cause you, oh, yeah. Yeah, you see that. It's like. There's the edges of the crater, and it's like goes all the way out into the oceans and shit. That's crazy, dude. Right, uh, right on the fucking um, northern yeah. corner of the Yucatan Peninsula. Yeah, and, that, and there's a. Uh, apparently, they have a bunch of sinkholes that it could cause as well. There was a good little uh, section there on like the the amount of energy and shit that was exposed. Oh, okay. If you go down a little bit, I'll so, tell you. It's uh, t- show not me where discovery. That is. G- keep going. There you go. Impact specifics. Oh, okay. Uh, researchers at the University of Glasgow. Uh, dated tektite samples from the impact as uh, 66 million years, uh, give or take 11,000 years, I guess. Uh, the Chicxulub impactor had an estimated diameter of 15 kilometers, so 9.3 miles. Thank you. Yeah, Wikipedia. thank you, Wikipedia. And delivered an estimated energy of 100... Oh, 10, I'm sorry, 10 billion. Of 10 billion, 10 billion with a B, Hiroshima A-bombs. Uh, well, then they got some math, That's which I'm jewels. not going to try to read. Yep. Uh, by contrast, the most powerful man-made explosive device ever detonated, the SAR bomb, had an energy of only uh, 210 petajoules, which uh, that is significantly less. Uh, the object dug a hole 100 kilometers wide and 30 kilometers deep, leaving 19 a 19 mile deep crater. Leaving a crater mainly under the sea and covered by 600 meters, that's 2,000 feet of sediment by the 21st century. Whoa. The effects are pretty interesting, too. You don't have to read all of that, but like. Maybe you could summarize for yeah, us. Yeah, the mega tsunami. So the impact would have caused a mega tsunami over 100 meters, 330 foot tall mega what tsunami. What the fuck, dude? So we're talking taller than most, you know, buildings. Yeah, that's almost as tall as me. Um, 
And it would reach all the way to what now is Texas and Florida. So those areas would be just destroyed. I mean, like what I the question I have is, I guess you'd probably be dead if you were in those areas already before that tsunami even hit, right? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. tsunamis travel, you know, what about the speed of sound or something? I mean, I guess they probably could. I don't know. I mean, I, the, I don't know how the, fast a tsunami with you know generated by that much energy. Would would I just wonder what would I imagine kill you? It's pretty fast. Would you be what? cooked by the radiation, just the just the heat that's thrown off by the explosion, or would you live long enough to see the? I <sighs> think that just depends on where you are. It depends on how uh, probably relatively close you are. Well, like if you were site. if you were on that coast that they talked about, if you oh. were in Texas or Florida when this happened, like would you die, would you live long enough to see the? And then the tsunami, or would you just be cooked before the wave ever hit? You know, I don't know. We'd have to get a scientist. Yeah, I don't think any of us are qualified kind of qualified to answer that. But but here's what we can speculate about. Here's what what where I think our fervent speculation comes into play. Because you know, a motherfucker this big, chances are we're gonna see it coming. Oh yeah, we're gonna have before, some idea. We're gonna have. I mean, we'll have some fucking notice on this one, probably. Right. You know. Um, well, you know whether that be months, whether that be weeks, maybe they even maybe even years. You know, what do you think humanity does when faced with with that? Like, let's say tomorrow the news breaks that this fucking uh, a ten kilometer wide fucking asteroid is hurtling towards the Earth. It's one hundred percent gonna fucking hit, and it's gonna destroy fucking life uh, as we know it. It's going to cause massive fucking problems. We got like two weeks to prepare. What happens? Where humanity is fucked. Yeah, I mean, I think we... But like, look, I think you're assuming that like the powers that be wouldn't try and cover up this information and preserve some sense of order so that they can try and preserve themselves in the time sure. that they have. Because if they, if, it, if they figure it out like a year ahead of time... The general populace isn't going to hear about it till like it's a week out. I mean, there's so many people with telescopes pointed at the sky. Yeah, but this is a different kind. You you have to have a certain kind of instrument to be able to see something as small as ten kilometers up in. I just feel like it'd be pretty hard to contain. I think the information would come out relatively quickly. But I mean, how many people would like? Just discount it, you know. Like, would like, cause wouldn't wouldn't the oh, people? Oh, I've people lived would, here on the, on this planet oh, all my life, gonna, and I ain't going nowhere. You're never gonna have universal like acceptance of the information. There's gonna be plenty of people that are probably form like cults, you know, worshiping the fucking asteroid. You're gonna have people that are just terrified, and there's just gonna be probably a lot of chaos and lawlessness. I mean, tons of mass suicides. Right? Oh yeah, oh mass yeah, suicides, mass killings, mass murder and robbery and rioting I mean, and all, looting and rape and pillage and all of that shit. All social order breaks down in that Eventually, scenario. yeah. I mean, like, uh, it, it, it all just depends, though, on how, like, how long we have. You know what I mean? If, if, it, if we find out about this two days ahead of time, how much destruction could be wreaked in those two days, you know? Um, but, yeah, I think that definitely a lot of people are going to die before it even hits the planet. Oh, yeah, dude. They're probably the lucky ones. Yeah. I mean, honestly, they're probably going to be the lucky ones because... One, you're going to have the impact. You're going to have all the events leading up to the impacts. I mean, even if you're like, let's say you're some underground fucking lair or something or someplace hold up. I mean, yeah, you're in NORAD or some shit. Yeah, like how, how, how long are you going to have supplies for? How long are you, are you actually going to be able to live that existence? Mm-mm-mm-mm. Well, yeah. And I mean, who are you down there with? Yeah. And, like, what are their motives and how are they going to hold up under long term of, you know, because like you like, it, let's say you did survive. Like, how long would it be before you could even conceivably walk back out onto the face of the planet? Yeah, I mean, like, how long would I mean, it take it might, for, the, for the fucking surface of the earth to even be it a might place rain, where you it might rain molten shit? for months as you know chunks of that shit that was thrown out into space get attracted back and fall back down to so there might be multiple like smaller impacts as giant chunks of the shit that was thrown up into space right, come uh, crashing back down elsewhere fucking, dude, that's why we need volts from fallout dude all right well here's what uh i'm reading an article now that said i was trying to figure out how, exactly how much warning we were likely to have if something like this is going to happen but the title of this article is um and this is from Forbes, not a science magazine, but, a, you know, whatever, respectable enough. Um, says, uh, we probably wouldn't even see a doomsday asteroid until it was too late. Cool. Uh, David Ewalt reports of, uh, on asteroid 9942 Apo- Apophis, a hunk of space rock discovered back in 2004, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
close pass. Da, 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 da. According to Ewalt, scientists are now claiming the asteroid is 20% bigger than they first thought. Da, 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 da. I don't care about this. I don't care about this asteroid that was well, a near I mean, miss. I want to know how long it would take for a fucking you to detect one that fucking. I mean, they just told us. you. I mean, they like there's a good chance that they wouldn't. I mean, they they have such a small percentage of the sky covered with telescopes right, at here any we given go. moment. Here we go. With so many of even the larger NEOs remaining undiscovered, the most likely warning today would be zero. NASA informs us we would see nothing at all until suddenly. Just as the impact occurred, we notice a flash of light and the shaking of the ground as it hit. Then poof! So there'd be no warning. I mean, there could be. We it's might possible. We might spot it beforehand and be like, "Oh, there it is." But it's actually more likely that we'd just be like, "Holy shit! We didn't even see it coming." Yeah, we're just, just fucking boom. You're dead. Also, the reality is, is we're probably still powerless. Yep. It's just like you know you're. It's kind of like okay, you get executed and you get shot in the back of the head and you never know, or you get to walk to the gallow. You know what I mean? Which which one do you want? You know, the results the same for the you know for ninety nine point nine percent of humans more than likely. Yeah. Oh yeah. I oh, mean, this is yeah. this has happened in in Earth's past at least a couple of times, so it's not like totally out of the realm of possibility at any moment that this could just happen. Yeah. Right now. Right in the While middle you're of us this. recording this shit. Boom. Ironically, although nobody will be around to experience the irony of it. I just wish we were live instead of pre-recording so that the world could ironically end as people were watching it. Like, oh, it probably won't happen in my lifetime. So- Boom, dead. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> dead, faggot. Dead. Hope it hits on the other side of the earth so that... Um, you, you know. get a few brief moments of yeah. So I'm like, show. I get like some what the hell's going on? I see some fucking flaming rocks in the sky heading down on me. I'm like, oh shit, this ain't good. That's pretty awesome. This ain't good. I want to. I want to. I don't know about this. I want to eat the tsunami, man. I want to see that 330 foot tall wave just crashing in. That would be kind of cool. You know, just I used to have watching. dreams when I was a little kid of, of, of a big tsunami killing you. Yeah, because I, I lived in the valley so I could see the, the Sierra Nevada mountains from my house. And I used to have this dream as a little boy of watching a big wave crash over those mountains and come into the valley and shit. That'd be a cool way to go. Very unlikely, but that'd be pretty cool. Yep. But you know what's even more cool? School. Gamma Ray bursts another one that like we're not gonna see coming right i don't know i don't know anything about them let's take a look let's learn let's learn things the gamma ray bursts. why gamma ray bursts are the most epic of all apocalyptic scenarios all right sell me on this concept becky ferrari ferrera Ferrer- what is it? ferrera stupid name Asteroid impacts, nuclear war, unhinged climate change. These are all respectable, solid entries into the pantheon of doomsday scenarios. Yeah, yeah, no one cares about your commentary, bitch. Leave that to us. But when it comes to sheer destructive flare, gamma ray bursts, GRBs. GRBs, dude. Yeah, I got it. Take the apocalyptic cake. Oh, shit. Forged in catastrophic cosmic disruptions like supernova and uh, supernovae. No vey. The neutron star mergers, GRBs, are the brightest phenomena in the universe, capable of releasing more energy in a single second than a sun will in its entire lifetime of 10 billion years. These bursts are essentially the universe's unique riff on projectile barfing. Cool. Sweet. Death. So, from like when space. a star dies, it pukes two giant lasers of energy in two opposite directions. Yeah, I've seen that. And. I mean, I've, if we happen to be yeah. so unlucky that our like rotation around the sun, it's like it's like it's the cosmic sniper shot, right? It's like this explosion happens and it's coming at us at light speed, and we just happen to rotate in front of it. And <laughs> now they're trying to make it out like the Death Star, dude. It's not yeah, anything like that. As cool as it sounds. A lot of the stuff that I found when I was looking into this say that scientists are pretty... They're like, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be a good thing if it hit us, but it's not going to kill the whole planet. It's not going to kill all of humanity. Yeah, we don't become the next Alderaan, dude. We don't just Yeah, go, uh, I see that we also pulled an article uh, debunking yeah. gamma ray bursts. Uh, summary, there is nothing to fear here. There is most likely no effect. At most, it would have an effect on our ozone layer. The danger is from UV light, and it wouldn't be hard to shield ourselves from that. 
Well, goddamn, motherfucker. How do you go from fucking the most epic fucking apocalypse ever to, eh, probably wouldn't be uh, shit. That's the thing that the media back, does go, with this Well, shit. go back to the clickbait site. Look. Yeah. 100 vine compilations. You know what I mean? Like, And then you're talking about, why is this kind of like dishonest? But I mean, this this is all over the place. You know what I mean? It's not just this site. People are like, yeah, man, this, this fucking gamma ray burst might happen and we're just going to be cooked. And it's like, no, no, we have like... Our planet has uh, radiation shielding built in, basically. Yeah, ten, we, have, we have an ozone layer. Ten, or it's like a hundred cubic meters or whatever of water worth of radiation yeah, shielding. Yeah, it's like ten meters deep. Is basically what. So basically, this would burn a big hole in our ozone layer, which we know doesn't destroy the human race because we done did that to the planet yeah, ourselves. We did that ourselves once. That was yeah, like, yeah. We'll we scorched like, a big fucking hole in the ozone layer, yeah. and it sucked, and yeah, it disrupted aer- shit, but yeah, it didn't kill us. Yeah, aerosols and the CFCs that. Create a hole in the ozone layer over like was it antarctica or something yep yeah whoopsie <laughs> whoops sorry but i always love how you know the people are like they really think that humans could have that much of an impact like all of a sudden these people who are always you know usually like talk about the triumph of the human spirit when it comes to like oh we fucked up and did something bad to the planet they're like as if a small insignificant humans could really do anything but i guess we'll get into that um, when we start talking about man-made disasters, yeah, we just drilled up. We just bored a big hole in the only thing keeping the sun from cooking everything on the planet, man. Whoops, whoopsie daisy. Um, <clears throat> doomsday star. What is this? What is this about? We got a doomsday star. Doomsday star. That Solar one flares. I don't know. That's not one that I pulled. Five billion. I mean, it must be because I didn't pull it. Five billion years from now, our sun will die. What? What? Okay. (laughs) Sorry, sun. After running out of hydrogen fuel, it will start burning heavier and heavier elements in its fusion core, causing its body to bloat, shedding huge quantities of material into space via violent stellar winds. During this time, our star will expand around 100 times bigger than it is now, Becoming what is known as a red giant. This so dramatic expansion will engulf Mercury and Venus and the, the I mean the or the two planets close to the sun. But what is less clear is what will happen to Earth. Will our planet go the way of Mercury and Venus and succumb to an ocean of superheated plasma? Or will our planet escape the worst of the sun's death throes to continue orbiting the twi- the the tiny white dwarf star that will be left behind? Well, um I don't think we need to worry about this one too much. Considering that five billion years from now, dude, I am worried about five billion years from now. What could happen? Yeah, what if I'm what, still? What would I be doing in five billion years? You, you know, you might want to start worrying about it, guys, because uh, I hate to tell you, but at Zego Energies, uh, we're working on a uh, a missile that will accelerate this process. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna turn the sun into a fucking red dwarf tomorrow. All right. So cool. you better prep yourself, bitch. Doomsday prep. Say goodbye to Mercury. Say goodbye to Venus. They're just going to go away. I never, Innocent I never, bystanders. You know, honestly, I never. vendetta I, against the Earth. I never gave a shit about them anyways. You know, I'm fine with it. I, I don't know. I kind of liked Venus because it rhymes with penis. You know. Venus, penis. Uh, the solar storm that almost destroyed human civilization. Um this is so about yeah, solar oh yeah, this is this here. is from the sun. Yeah, yeah, I did pull these. So this is how the sun could kill us. This is uh, this is the sun. Our, I mean, I've always told people I hate the sun. And they're always like, oh, it's the giver of life. Well, it also could be the giver of death. What it give, it can taketh away. What the sun giveth, the sun taketh away. That's right, Scotty. Solar storms are one of the most frightening doomsday scenarios that are dangerous today in the modern era of electricity. They are caused when twisted. Oh, shit, twisted. Magnetic field lines on the solar surface snap and send a cloud of plasma hurling into space. These charged particles offer a different kind of doomsday. Instead of mutating life on Earth or sterilizing the plants, the most likely scenario is a strong cloud of plasma destroys any electronic device that is on at the time of the strike. Yes, it will cause thousands of casualties instantly as planes fall from the sky, cars suddenly stop working, and various other types of equipment cease to function. But overall, most people will be unharmed. The disaster comes through our dependence on technology. Most commerce will be erased. Most forms of communication would be obliterated. The internet would be destroyed. Oh, no. Uh, Not the internet. Not the internet. 
Many people in hospitals would surely die. World trade would come to a standstill. Agriculture would be stopped in its tracks. Generally, the entire modern way of life would cease. So it's basically like when Snake Plissken presses the fucking doomsday code yep. at yep. the end of uh, Escape from L.A. Back to the fucking Stone Age, dude. It's like, all right, we're resetting fucking... Dude. This is like the uh, primitivist's uh, dream scenario, though. Yeah, this is the, like, the rewilders... Who, yeah, that that's the ones I was thinking yeah. of. Uh, there there are people that think that that's the only way for human beings to coexist peacefully and to live out their days is for us to go back to our primitive tribal nomadic <laughs> hunter gatherer <laughs> lifestyle because as we know those are the most peaceful times we've oh absolutely absolutely peace reigned over the planet uh, even 500 years ago the or you know the 15th century dude the murder rate was like 500 people for like hundred thousand. Yeah, you don't know, Scotty. You know, or, I mean, people the, were happier. People killed each other for like nothing. And, and, and if you go back, I'm sure far enough, it was probably like you took TJ's fucking bone, now he bashes your fucking brains out of your fucking skull. Paul steel bone. Paul now, die. Now smash Paul's skull. <laughs> yep, sounds like sounds great to me, man. It's gonna be fun. It doesn't actually sound much different than now, to be honest with you. I've never. When have I ever smashed your skull, Paul? How many times? Have Every I done that? fucking day, dude. I don't mean Every metaphorically. Day. I oh, mean, you know, okay. <laughs> like literally, just take a fucking blunt object and smash you. You in haven't the head done with that it. yet. Yeah, not yet. Not yet, Paul. When this fucking CME hits, Paul, he's going to. Yeah, but when that electromagnetic pulse fucking knocks out all the technology on Earth, what else am I going to do for entertainment at that point? I do agree with this article, though, that this one is probably the most frightening of the doomsday scenarios for me because it. Yeah, it's not going to kill you. It's just going right. to turn your life into fucking Total a topsy-turvy hell. mess. Well, no, topsy-turvy <laughs> mess. TJ, what? that's that's the kind of thing that happens on a Saturday morning program. <laughs> topsy-turvy. You know, Billy the Bear spills the honey on the table and creates a topsy-turvy <laughs> mess. This is going to create fucking hell on earth. Pandemonium. No internet, TJ. Roving rape gangs, TJ. Roving fucking looting gangs. Mad Max. Highway men, dude. Cats and dogs living together. <laughs> Mass hysteria. Yep. TJ, you're not going to be able to fucking earn a living on the internet anymore, dude. You're going to have to fucking There's gonna work. There's going to be no internet. That's what I'm saying. You're, TJ's going to be working Ooh. the fucking fields, dude. That part is good. The I, fact that there's going to be TJ's, no internet, I would revel in that for a few let's seconds. Let's see what the DP, I'm sorry, the DFF subreddit has to say about this. <laughs> Oops, oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> They're all running for their lives. <laughs> I'm running for my life too. <laughs> Less funny. I'm dead. Yeah. Oxen. <laughs> Don't, we're getting some oxen and some farmland, TJ. Uh, I'm just gonna put it out there that if anyone plow wants, the fields, if anyone wants to join my roping, uh, I'm sorry, my roving uh, rape and murder <laughs> gang. Um, I'm know. gonna have a roping rape and murder gang where we just blow ropes <laughs> of ropes of cum all over people. Whoa! Yeah, make a little lasso. You know, here's a rope for you. Ah! Uh, Paul, to I'm be gonna, honest, I'm gonna wish for. I'm gonna wish Paul's gonna be hanging people. From Let's trees. be real here. You know, we're all fucking liberal fucking pussies here. Yeah. I think Scotty might own a gun or two. I don't know. Yeah, he probably but, does. But uh, you know, you and me, Paul, we're gonna we're gonna kind of wish we were gun nuts at that point. Like, nah, man, I wish I was a gun nut. I don't want to even. I don't want to engage in that shit. I just want to die. Just you know, because like at that point, well, no- I mean, even if you have, even if you just want to blow your brains out, you know, there's tall things around. Really? I mean, I don't know. I, I can go travel to a tall to thing. I want to do that. Well, I mean, what? It's over in like three seconds. Yeah. Whatever. You just like, I'll push you if you want. I'll help you overcome your fear. I'll shove you and I'll jump right after you. I'm just going to walk over to Scotty's house and borrow a gun to blow my brains out. Actually, no, I'm just going to... Scotty's going to be on the move with his guns getting to a safe area, yeah, TJ. Yeah, there's no He's way. Not, what do you think? <laughs> Scotty's just going to be sitting at his house? <laughs> yeah, I figured. I figured you'd be, you'd be at his house, you know, like chilling. Like, what's up, TJ? What up? Fucking, you know, EMP, what? man. Crazy but, shit, dude. I mean, to be honest, you probably wouldn't even make it to the high thing to jump off of. Somebody would probably murder you on the way there. So That's why I'm just going to get on the side of the murderers. I think that that's You're just going to get a gun? You know, I don't even know. You know, we'll see. Dude, we'll TJ, see what happens. TJ be a slaver, dude. TJ be enslaving people and shit. Yeah, you know. He's pretty big. I can see I can see TJ being part of a gang. Play it by ear. Play it by ear. Segmento becomes like a god in the new Oh, that'd world. be awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you and I team up to like rule humanity with fucking Segmento. That's right, you gibbering fools. The great cataclysm has come and all of your electronic devices are moot. 
Now you will bow to my jiggling segments. <laughs> oh. oh, I love him, that's, dude. That's horrible, dude. I love him. Humanity needs a new fucking figure to inspire. Dude, a savior to lead us out of the wasteland. I think Segmento is the hero that humanity needs. Yes. In the fucking... Um, the, the post-apocalypse. The, the EMP apocalypse. The solar The no flare. technology future that we're all going to live in when the fucking solar flare hits. So here's another uh, potential doomsday scenario. Earth's magnetic poles show signs they're about to flip, exposing humans oh, to radiation shit, and planet-wide blackouts. Kind of similar, actually. Uh, so uh, for those of you who don't know, the Earth has magnetic poles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who doesn't know that. So, I, mean, I don't know, dude. They got some stupid fuckers out there. Historically, Earth's north and south magnetic poles have flipped every 200,000 to 300,000 years, except right now they oh, haven't shit. flipped successfully for around 780,000 years. They so need to flip, dude. They're waiting to flip. They're way overdue. I mean, for somebody forgot this one in the oven, man. But the planet's magnetic field is at long last showing signs of a shifting. Although there's no way to know yet for sure, it could be gearing up to flip once more, according to Undark magazine. Yeah, well, that's a... I'm oh, sure okay. Un, Undark's got its finger on the pulse. And that possibility is raising new speculation about what that would mean for planetary life. Our planet's magnetic fields uh, pr field protects us from lethal levels of radiation and phenomena like solar rays. The dangerous particles never hit us directly because upon entering the Earth's atmosphere, the magnetic field deflects them and forces them to move around, uh, according to NASA. It's like a fucking force field, dude. Yep. Yeah, it's like our fucking energy shield. So the prospect of that field weakening, uh, which it does when it's getting ready to flip, is worrisome. It could leave us without sufficient protection. So basically, our magnetic field could weaken before it does its weird little shift. Uh, the magnetic field extends out from the uh, electrical currents created by the metals in its core, the Earth's core, uh, generating invisible lines that touch back down to the planet's opposing magnetic poles. Um, cosmic radiation expert Daniel Baker, director of the laboratory of... He's, he's, he's impressive. Believes that the next pole reversal could likely render some areas of the planet unlivable. Okay. So this motherfucker says that... Um, with this impressive resume, says that maybe some areas of the planet. He, yeah, but he's not unlivable. saying like everyone dies. Right. Yeah, that's not an extinction type scenario. You know, he's saying like this will be inconvenient to a lot of people. Um. Blah 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 blah. Uh, here's, a, here's another article that kind of says that uh, it, it's like overblown. Well, of course. Why you probably? And they say probably, probably. shouldn't shouldn't worry about the Earth's magnetic poles flipping. Uh, Earth's magnetic poles, whatever they're doing, are not going to spark chaos and kill us, a scenario that's making the rounds online right now. According to the Australian news site news.com.au, a magnetic flip would not only uh, cause massive blackouts, even flushing the toilet could become impossible. What? Why? Wow. As reported by Undark, Daniel Baker, the director of the laboratory of blah, 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 is suggesting a reversal would render parts of the planet uninhabitable, though Baker is not directly quoted saying this. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oops. Oh, no. Here's what's really happening and why there's no need to take cover in a doomsday bunker. Oceans of molten iron are swirling deep inside the planet around the outer core and sloshing sets up the giant bar magnet through the Earth. Uh, though not a real concrete magnet, of course. The giant magnet sits at an angle of about 11 degrees from the axis around which the Earth spins. According to windows of the universe, these poles are not in the same place as our geographic north and south poles. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. And remember that swirling iron, it's constantly moving around. The result, blobs of that iron get flipped in the opposite direction uh, from iron atoms around them. Scientists say they become reverse aligned when they are... Uh, when there are enough reverse-aligned iron atoms, the giant bar magnet flips, and the magnetic north becomes magnetic south. So, basically, just like everyone who owns a compass is going to be like, what the fuck is going on? Well, I mean, it's a little worse than worse that. Worse than that, dude. I mean, any, any kind of, like, uh, global positioning is going to be Yeah, you know, like, GPS is not going to work. Um, you're not going to have that. You're not going to be able to locate any, things. Any kind of navigation system, really, that relies all, on adherence a, to true north. It would also affect the uh, ele basically a lot of electronics, the, the, the electrical grid and shit. Like you wouldn't be like you might have like blackouts and 
people unable to use uh, any sort of electricity. I remember I was I was telling you guys before we started this about the magnetic pole reversal. I remember watching a video and I couldn't find it. I went looking for it, but it was a while ago. One of those, you know, you know where they are on, on YouTube where it's just like the magnetic pole reversal is oh, coming. Oh, yeah, the, the, the total doomsday scenario. And I was watching it, and, and the dude was like, but the most horrifying death will come to those unfortunate souls that live around the Earth's equator as they literally die screaming, falling into the sky. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> they will Wait a fall minute. into the sky. Hold on hey, one we're second. we're pretty close to the equator. I hope we don't fall into the sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah! I don't, think that's, I don't think that's how it works, but whatever. That's how it works, dude. We just start falling up. <laughs> the mag- dude, the gravitational field around Earth also uh, weakens, and you fly off t- into space. Yeah, I don't know. Just all of a sudden, gravity just says, like, fuck it. Too much electrical interference. We don't falling just- into the sky. What about what if you're indoors? Do you fall into the ceiling, or does your entire Whoa. house? <laughs> no, your house. Your house is gone, dude. Your entire house just falls yeah. into the sky too. Like, like ah! dude, if you have a house on the equator, dude, it's just gonna fly off. And then the wicked witch rides by on her broom. <laughs> you're like, no! Oh god, dude, why? I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too. Dude, I saw preppers about people that believe this shit. They're like, when it when the shift happens. They Chaos just, will reign. They just walk around with a stake planted in the dirt and a rope tied to themselves. I'm ready for mo- when it's everyone well, going to fall up. They, they were obviously going more for the angle of societal collapse. You know, civilization is over as we know it, and they have to have a lot of food and supplies. Civilization done be over but, now. Oh, and, and they had like a movement plan. They, I think they were going to go like, we got to go north or some shit, or, or the new north, or it was like some crazy plan they had that they were going to be fine when the pole shifted. But it's like... <laughs> And, but they believed it would happen suddenly, like like, like overnight, like, yeah, that's okay, not the case. And, and it's not the case. That article that you were just reading goes on to say that the pr- actual process of reversing poles takes somewhere between 1,000 and 10,000 years, I think. I mean, even... So it's likely something that we would just adjust to as it happened. The quickest I read that it could occur is 100 years, is what they understand now. I mean, that's, that's like the absolute So there's fastest. no, there's no like, oh shit, the poles just reversed. No, no. it's not going to happen overnight. That's it's like, not, oh, that's the not. poles are reversing over the course and of, it might cause you know, like an generation. uptick in uv radiation but earlier we learned that that's not a total fucking problem either i mean we talked about uh so a, a lot of our a lot of our hole. a lot of these doomsday scenarios that people fucking wring their hands about are uh kind of not really all that besides the asteroid yeah like the asteroid that's a bad motherfucker that's like but, fuck dude there there actually is some to that one like what warning do we have I none mean, so far asteroids seem to be like the bad motherfuckers the gamma ray burst is kind of like all right whatever you're over it's gonna sound scarier than it actually is uh the s- solar flares and shit i mean that could be a the thing. emp sounds pretty bad dude. oh yeah well, that's, that's what i'm saying the solar bad. flares they ca- kick out that plasma and shit and it hits the earth and i guess it fucking acts like a giant emp that fucking wipes out electricity yeah, the cme is, your, is what we're talking about yeah. so i guess we're at, we're about a 50 percent rate here because uh asteroid and solar flares pretty badass but gamma ray bursts and magnetic pole reversal really ain't pretty shit. fucking yeah, pretty fucking to be a little lame. trumped up trumped up trickle down Trumped up, trickled down. Well, here's Ugh. one. This is not exactly a doomsday scenario per se, but it's a pretty cataclysmic event. Uh, the super volcanoes. Yeah, oh, and up shit, until dude. recently, a lot of people were talking about this like it was a surefire doomsday scenario. Yeah, like out there, I was just gonna go and um, fucking wipe out Wyoming, basically. Uh, yeah. So there's six known super volcanoes in the world. Yeah, the, the most Cal- famous one is yeah the Yellowstone Caldera. The here. super volcano. Yeah, I, I first heard about this on Discovery Channel, dude. I was, I was like watching. There was like a preview for the uh, a show they did on. And it's about like the super volcano. They had some experts like if this erupts and which we're due for, like you know, wipe out humanity. This could be the end of civilization. Yeah, they used to say that it was gonna kind of like what we learned about the meteors, <laughs> in that it throws up all this shit into the atmosphere. Right, it does do that, just not on the scale that it would take to wipe out all the plant life on Earth, which is really the problem with that. It would take, like, in reading and looking into this, it would take two or three of these fucking things erupting at the same time to have that kind of cata- catastrophic effect. Uh, I, there's a few other uh, super oh. volcanoes around. Oh, the we'll Long get back Valley to the Caldera. Long Valley Caldera. This is uh, second only to Yellowstone in North America. Is a uh, Long Valley Caldera. 
<coughs> located in East Central California. Sorry, I'm allergic to calderas. Um, 200 square mile caldera, just south of Mono Lake. Yep. Shit. Near the Nevada state line, the biggest eruption from Long Valley was uh, 760,000 uh, years ago, which unleashed 2,000 to 3,000 times as much lava and ash as Mount St. Helens, uh, which is pretty... I mean, for those who remember anything about the Mount St. Helens eruption, it's pretty fucking crazy. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Then in the early 1990s, early... Sorry, large amounts of carbon dioxide gas from magma below began seeping up through the ground and killing trees. Uh, these sorts of signs are present. It could mean trouble in uh, is centuries, decades, or even years away. Say volcanologists. Yeah. yeah, basically, like it could happen. It could happen. It's not long. Not far from where I grew centuries, up. Centuries, dec- decades, months, years, minutes. We don't know. Could be right now. Could be erupting as we speak. Cool. Uh, I don't know how that's pronounced. Valles or Valles. Valles. Okay. How do you know that? Uh, I grew up in Madera, California. All right. What, so that's a, a Spanish word, I'm guessing. Yes. Right? Yeah, it is, obviously. The 175-square-mile Valles Caldera forms a large poc. What the fuck is a poc? In the middle of northern New Mexico, west of Santa Fe. It last exploded 1.2 million years ago and uh, 1.6 million years ago, piling up 150 cubic miles of rock. So that's pretty crazy. Damn, dude. Why are so many of these in North America? Yeah. Uh, Lake Toba went off 74,000 years ago. That's another big one. Um, Taupo. Taupo. So New Zealand. That's in New Zealand. And Era Caldera, which is in, I guess, Japan? Yes, it's in Japan. So, yeah. Bad luck for them because they're on a little ass island. Well, just- it's called the Pacific Ring of Fire for a reason. Yeah, they're fucked. I mean, we're all, I mean, all, all the, all, most of this major volcanic activity is in that fucking area. Around the globe. So New Zealand, that's what, that's what you hear. Japan, tsunamis, earthquakes. New Zealand, earthquakes. The West Coast obviously has a ton of earthquakes. There's one in Washington State in the early 2000s. There's All right, well, I got bad A ton news. in California. The biggest one of these motherfuckers is Yellowstone. Oh, yeah. And that's the one everyone knows about. And I got bad news for you guys. What's that? Imminent. Well, yeah. I mean, it's imminent. A, it, imminent. Another one of these things that's overdue. What if they all happen at the same time? Yeah, the Earth's we, just we like, you know what? Hope. Fuck it. Reverses its poles. A fucking solar flare goes off. A meteorite hits, and the Yellowstone caldera goes. It's just like Earth's like, you know what? I fucking had it. Just a chain effect, dude. All six of them. Yellowstone the eruption imminent. All caps imminent. Imminent. Super volcano anomaly triggers fears of volcano to blow. Uh, Yellowstone volcano could be on the brink. Could be. Could be. Could be on the brink of cataclysmic uh, eruption after TJ, a pair of researchers uncovered a magma anomaly stretching TJ, across are, the are country. We, are we really that scared of it, though? I mean, we have a plan, remember? What's our plan? You're going to fire me into the volcano yeah, jerking gonna, off, yeah, and I'll, I'm going to save humanity. How is that going to save humanity? <laughs> We don't know, the but the force of the impact of my splooge is going to cool the lava immediately. Wow. And the impact of my splooge, like I'm going to do a belly flop on the like lava. Like you said, it's going to be a tachyon pulse. Like Paul's oh, gonna, shit. Paul's going to come so hard, it's going to look like, oh, a tachyon Paul pulse. I tachyons, dude. Yeah, I dude. do. And it's going to and it's going to fucking neutralize. He's going to fix it with Star Trek pseudoscience, dude. You know, exactly, dude. Awesome. I told you that I was, uh, you know, infertile, but I didn't tell you why. It's because tachyons can't fertilize an egg, TJ. Wow. Cool. Paul, savior of humanity, dude. Uh, uh, fear and panic broke out overnight. I don't remember that. After Stephen Grand and Peter Nelson from the University of Texas. Oh, well, they're Texans. They don't know what they're talking about. Broke the silence of their shocking Yellowstone volcano discovery. The two volcano researchers uncovered evidence um, of a plume abnormality underneath the volcano in between the Earth's core and mantle, which could run all the way to Mexico. Uh, The findings of the research were published in the scientific journal Nature Geoscience and have already taken over the imagination of the public. I know my imagination has been taken over. Dude, this is the problem. Anytime you give the media an article (laughs) of scientific nature that has anything to do with anything that you, you can really get into people's heads like this, they just run away with it. It's like... They broke their silence. It's like, so these guys, these two nerds basically published a fucking research paper on the caldera and a plume that was going on. It's like, this is strange. And now it's like, imminent explosion, we'll all die. Could happen. I mean, it got our click, you know. Uh, According to the study, the volcanic plume, which is 600 to 800 degrees uh, Celsius, 
uh, warmer than surrounding areas, is responding for... Oh, sorry, responsible for the volcanism witnessed in Yellowstone. Uh, the study reads, Our results strongly support a deep origin for the Yellowstone hotspot and also provide evidence for the existence of thin thermal mantle plumes that are currently beyond the resolution of global tomography models. Um, so I'm not hearing the, I'm not hearing them saying like explosion imminent. No, <laughs> the you're, you're, you're not. The scientists don't seem to be like, hey, it's gonna go, it's gonna blow, run. The, these scientists are making hyperbolic statements. Are you uh, really? Are you sure? That's so weird. I mean, the article says, I mean, that they broke their silence. Yeah, science is a, is afraid to tell people the truth. All right, so what'll happen if Yellowstone explodes? It'll suck. I mean, a giant eruption. At Yellowstone National Park could impact the world's global climate for years afterwards, even decades. On its website, uh, this this is the website of the USGS. U.S. Geological Survey. Yes. On its website, it says such a giant eruption would have regional effects such as falling ash and short-term, years to decades, change to global climate. The surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming would be affected, as well as other places in the United States and the world. Such eruptions usually from form calderas, broad volcanic depressions created as the ground surface collapses as a result of withdrawal of partially molten rock magma below. Fortunately, the chances of this eruption at Yellowstone are exceedingly small in the next few thousand years. Whatever, lying ass scientists. They don't know. Boo, imminent. science. Boo. Imminent. Boo. Imminent explosion. Imminent. Going to happen apparently tomorrow. These, apparently these scientists haven't talked to those two intrepid Texan scientists that broke their silence on this. So here's a couple maps. Uh, they're a little different, but um, here's the map. Here's the kill zone, dude. Possible Yellowstone volcano. I mean, obviously they don't know exactly what's going to fucking happen, but here's, here's a guess. So Wyoming... Bye bye. Yeah, uh, whatever state. Th- yeah, that's uh, Wyoming and is pretty much fucked. Montana. And nothing of value was lost. Montana's gone, dude. I've driven through Wyoming. Dude, what's that state that's pretty much entirely covered, like above Colorado? That's Wyoming. Oh, is that all Wyoming? Yep. yep, that's Wyoming. And Wyoming is just dead. Fuck, dude. I can't even see Wyoming. And so- you know what? I've driven through Wyoming, and there's gonna be. <laughs> that's not gonna affect too many people. No, nah, not too many. Uh, Idaho is like fucked. Three people. Mo- Montana's yeah. fucked. Idaho is pretty. Also, fucked. same deal though. I mean, barely anyone lives there. So, honestly, it's a pretty good position in the U.S. Uh, you see, there they have the kill zone. Pretty big kill zone. Gonna kill a lot of people if that happens. So they're all dead. Bye bye. I mean, luckily it's it's not too many states that anyone's gonna miss. I don't think anyone's gonna be like, oh no, not Wyoming. Well, I mean, yeah, they're not gonna miss that, but they're gonna miss the shit that's grown in these states. Yeah, that isn't going well, to be growing the, in these that's states. That's the biggest. Uh, that's the biggest problem for the country at large is that uh, this is gonna kill a shit ton of crops. You see those huge primary and yeah, secondary the, ash the, zones. It's gonna, the, well, that's the bread basket of the U.S. You're talking about Kansas, yeah. so, Iowa, you know, Missouri. You're going you're gonna to go to the store and a fucking ear of corn is going to be like 30 bucks and, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, just the economic devastation from this could cause scenarios that we've already talked about, like, you know, the mass panics, the violence and rioting and looting. And Hey, you know what, though? At least here in Louisiana, we're out of the range. No ash for us, really. Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know what though? Uh, that was actually, not my problem. I mean, the, the that Mississippi, was actually, not my fucking problem. The, yeah, the, the Mississippi River is probably going to be full of ash and oh. bringing it down to us. Well, that uh, that was the more optimistic of the two charts. Oh, there. is it? Oh. Shit, so, dude. Oh, fuck. Let's look at the slightly more pessimistic chart. Oh no, fuck, dude. Maybe it's a little bit less. Well, Rosie. you know what? It's rain and ash. We're, Hallelujah. We're, I think we're still all right, TJ. You know, I, I feel like this one actually says that a little bit more of Wyoming is going to be spared, but it has a much larger ash zone. Yeah. Uh, and that they have the hot ash zone, so that's not fun. That, that doesn't, doesn't sound, sound good. Yeah, that sounds like it'd kill some people. But sounds- you know what? L- LA is spared. New York is spared. So. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I, if this actually did happen... It'd be really hard for uh, Republicans to win an election for a while. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Oh, God, yeah. Because uh, it looks like it's kind of sparing a lot of the liberal areas. 
and destroying a lot of conservative shit. So maybe, maybe, maybe this needs to happen. But you know what? That's okay somewhere. though, because climate change and flooding and, and and you know the rising sea levels will take care of the rest of it. Dude, the next the next Democratic presidential nominee dude, you know needs what? to run on blowing up the caldera and oh, getting rid of these people. I think Ohio might be the place to be, dude. Because <laughs> this liberal elitist scum just talk about t- killing conservatives. TJ, if this <laughs> happens, we have to move back to Ohio because it's going to miss the caldera, but it's not on the coast. So it's gonna so global. I mean, as far as the the rising seas, it's gonna be less affected. Right, dude. I just want to tell you something. I'm never living in Ohio again. If if if, if, if the caldera goes, we might have to. No. If the no, caldera no, goes, no, we're no, moving, no, TJ. No, no, no. We're moving, TJ. No, 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 no. I'm just no. I'm just getting out of this country. If the caldera goes, no. fuck, fuck, trying to resettle around here. Yeah, let's go to Mexico. I'm going to a continent that doesn't have a super volcano on it because I've learned my lesson. Yeah, that's a good idea. There was a bunch of places that were not mentioned on the Super Caldera fucking list, so let's go to one of those. I think all the white people should just move to Mexico and take it over. You know what? Africa ain't so bad after all, guys. There's no fucking calderas there. Yeah, let's Paul, go. that's where you would go. It's yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's Paul's first choice, Africa. Umbaba way. Dude, I'm going back to the motherland, dude. And before you say it's not my motherland, all life started there, okay? Yeah, Paul, it doesn't count for you, though. Paul, you're going to fucking the Philippines, dude. You're going to Asia. I'm going back to commune with my people. I thought Paul was getting dropped into the volcano to shoot his tachyon cum into the fucking... Well, I mean... Gaping like, lava maw. I mean, more, That's only if he's somebody there. listens to me, too. Like, yeah. people, people don't take me seriously. So, like, the government might be like, this guy doesn't come tachyons. So let's just die. Yeah. I mean, so like, I let's, just, saved... let's just die. Like, let's just die now. I love that statement. Yeah. <laughs> let's just die. Let's just die. Let's just die. I want to be dead. I don't need to live. They're gay this and guy. aloof towards existence. <laughs> Let's just die, okay? <laughs> this guy clearly doesn't clum tachyons. I don't think tachyons would do anything anyway, but they do in Star Trek. They, well, dude, that just shows your ignorance, TJ. TJ, the tachyons would solve does. the fucking... Dude, Paul's fucking tachyon just would hit the fucking goddamn magma and just go... Whoosh, 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 yep. Chain reaction. Yep, it would instantly cool and solidify the, for another 100,000 years. The dude. magma would instantly be like, oh, sorry, and it would just kind of like creep back in, put its hat back on, back away into this hole. Like, all right. But what I haven't told people... Dude, there was an that, episode of uh, Star Trek where this happened, though. It was in The Next Generation. I don't know if you guys... They shot just... Tachyon come into no, the volcano? No, no, no. <laughs> they, they, they had a planet that was going to be destroyed by volcanic activity, and they oh. somehow neutralized it. They shot data down there to come tachyons at it. I was thinking, I think that's what I was happened. thinking Picard in a parachute. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he gave his life hilariously to save the planet. The cum must be squirted here. That's <laughs> how <laughs> <laughs> Captain Picard gets fucking uh gets laid, dude. He has, he tells him where it's gonna go. Uh, all right, so here's yet another uh, doomsday scenario. This one's pretty legit. Um, you know, it's never quite wiped us out, obviously, but it's come pretty close. Um, it's come pretty close. Come. Let's stop talking about come for a second. The five deadliest outbreaks of pandemics in history. The Black Death, dude. Yeah, the this Black is this is death. another one that could just happen any second, too. I mean, we're always hearing about these new fucking viruses. That well, that's why they cover them, because they're like, what if this is the next, you know, big plague or something? Uh, the plague, you know, obviously was pretty devastating. Um, the global population was 450 million and at least 75 million of that were believed to have perished throughout the uh, that's pandemic. Crazy. So some estimate as much as 200 million. That's fucking insane. Yeah. Cause so that's can, nearly half of humanity. If you consider the collateral damage and shit, I bet that, that higher estimate is probably But guess right. what? Our ancestors survived. Woo! Yay. Barely. Uh, Holy shit. The Spanish flu of 1918, approximately 90 years before the 2009 swine flu pandemic killed more than 200,000 people. Uh, reports of an especially dangerous form of influenza began to appear around the world. Kansas was the site of the first U.S. case in March 1918. Appearing in multiple ca- uh, countries around the world, the disease spread quickly, ushered along even faster due to the close living quarters of troops fighting in World War I. Uh, the first instance of an H1N1 pandemic would be dubbed the Spanish flu, despite the fact that it didn't actually come from Spain. 
Uh, it burned out quickly and suddenly by 1919 with the explanation still unknown today. But it left the go- global population decimated with a mortality rate as high as one in five and an estimated one third of the world population afflicted. As many as 50 million people are believed to have died. You Approximately 25 million of those deaths came in the first uh, 25 weeks of the outbreak. You know what's called the Spanish flu, too? It's because they didn't censor their newspapers. So they actually, they actually the, the newspapers in Spain actually were allowed to cover the uh, Spanish so, flu. So the rest of them, the, so basically the, the the rest of the world was just like, no, nothing's going on. Nothing's like, happening. People aren't dying. Yeah, everything's crazy. fine. Everything's fine. So well, well, when you, I, I, don't get, you I don't know if you realized this year, but the flu season this year was pretty brutal for most, uh, considering most years, a lot, a lot of children. It. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people got it. A lot of people died from it. More. Uh, I mean, I think, I don't know if they have the numbers yet, but. Hospitals were like overrun with flu cases this year. Crazy shit. So much people were. I, I know much people were freaking out about that. Like the flu was actually like a legit thing. And like got the flu. Like oh shit. So when you go in to get your H one N one inoculation, you're getting inoculated with a weakened version of that 1918 virus that killed you know one in five people. Well, I, don't, I don't think the virus is active though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weakened version. They yeah. just put it in there to build up your immunities. <laughs> that's that's pretty crazy though. It's just to teach your immune system, hey, kill this when you see it. And the flu is like considered to be pretty minor now, at least in America. You know what I mean? Well, not this oh, year. Not got this the year. flu. Well, I mean, I, yeah, but even now, though, like you get the flu and like. Well, compared to like this. H1N1, well, this well this year, yeah, there's a, yeah. you if you you can look back, there's a ton of news stories about kids just getting the flu this year, then just being dead like several hours later. Wow. So, I mean, it was just crazy. You never know. But let's uh, see if I can find any uh, statics on uh, statistics on cash statics. I did not find it static. The flu is killing up to 4,000 Americans a week. Wow. That's from February 10th. I'm telling you, the flu the was The amount bad this of year. influenza ravaging the U.S. this year rivals levels normally seen when an altogether new virus emerges, decimating a vulnerable population that hasn't had a chance to develop any defenses. Um, it's an unexpected phenomenon that public health experts are still trying to decode. The levels of influenza-like illnesses being reported now are as high as the peak of the swine flu epidemic in 2009 and exceed the last several se- the last severe flu uh, sorry the last severe seasonal flu outbreak in 2003 when a new strain started circulating. Said Ann Shushat Shuchat, uh, the U.S. Centers uh, for Disease Control and Prevention acting director. Uh, swine flu, which swept the globe in 2009 and 2010, sickened 60.8 million Americans, hospitalized 274,304, and killed 12,469, according to CDC data. Deaths from the current outbreak will likely far outstrip those 2009 to 2010 seasons. So, uh, you know, massive numbers of casualties uh, during this last flu season. Um, and, and you never know what year it's going to be like. Total that. fucking pandemic uh, conditions. Now, obviously not not at that doomsday level we're talking about, but who knows? Well, l- luckily it's just the flu, which is, I mean, it, most people survive the flu, and it's not that bad of a disease. Now, imagine if that was Ebola or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is, I mean, once again, this is something that killed children and old people. Yeah, the it, people who primarily people with compromised immune systems or weakened immune systems. Uh, the or- agency reported another 10 deaths among children this season, bringing the total to 63 so far. Half of the other... I guess it's mostly killing old people. Uh, the agency only started counting deaths among children in 2004 after a particularly severe season. That year, the number of doctor's office visits for the flu peaked at 7.6%. So basically, when the fl- when th- this flu basically came through and, and wiped out our old people population. so Thanks, flu. All the old people yeah, have been us cleared out. out. They've been cleared out. Sweep them away. Sweep them away. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's a, a, a pandemic is definitely... That's a scary one. Dude, that's I mean, what, um, that can come out of nowhere. Well, just talking about that, just very briefly, uh, that's what killed... Um, what's his face? Tom Benson, the owner of the Saints who just died. Oh, the flu? He had the flu. Wow, it's like it was clean all the, even even the rich old people. Yeah, he, he was a billionaire. Guess his money didn't save him. This is another one of those scenarios where I think that like you'd probably be better off just getting whatever it was because the people that survived it are, are going to face all those other things we've been talking about: societal collapse and the breakdown and the violence and the theft and the rape and pillage and all that stuff. I mean, th- this would set that off almost surely. No. 
I oh, mean, yeah. one that was powerful enough that was killing, oh, yeah, you know, millions and millions of people. Anything well, well, imagine how little trust you'd have with a person you didn't know. Or I mean, you'd be like, I don't know if they might have the fucking disease. There would be, be a, insane runs on like food stores and I mean, shit. Let's say something as powerful as the fucking Black Death came back around and uh, and did its did uh, like an equivalent amount of devastation and. You know what? How many people live in this country? Like three hundred ten million, three hundred twenty million, something like, like that. thirty million, something like yeah. So I mean, it'd be like we're talking like about you know around one hundred fifty million deaths. So how about half the population? I mean, every place. I mean, like bodies would just be left. I mean, there wouldn't. Yeah, be, I mean, there'd be you, you wouldn't be able to dispose of it quickly enough. Like every funeral home and like you know uh, crematory. Like there's every not. Place, I mean, there's not going to be. Morgues be overflowing. There's not going to even be funerals and shit at that point. It's just going to be like cart your dead off in wagons and shit. It's just going to be so commonplace. Um, one of the things I read about this when I was looking into it, too, is like even more dangerous than a viral outbreak is a fungal outbreak. Oh, really? Like, oh, because shit, because we know so little about treating fungal infections when compared to viral infections that mm-hmm. if a fungus were to mutate and become predatory to the human species, it would almost certainly just wipe us out because uh, we just have no idea how to fight fungus, really. Uh, it's like the last of us, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it really is. Maybe that's the origin of the Mushroom Kingdom from yeah. the Mario Shit, games. Shit, dude. Uh, Ice Age. I, oh, you know, that's obviously, yet again... What not- killed the dinosaurs? The Ice, the Ice Age. Age! Well, actually, it was the meteor, but whatever. The Ice Arnold. Age! <laughs> whatever, Arnold. We got you, buddy. We got you. What causes an Ice Age, and uh, what would happen if the Earth endured another one? It would suck, dude. Uh, Ice Ages don't just happen overnight, although some movies might have us believe they do. Clearly referring to that terrible Roland Emmerich fucking thing. Yeah. Which, what was that? Fucking Day After Tomorrow? Yeah. Or d- yeah. Uh, these mythical events, how are they, they're not mythical, have shaped human history, but what causes them and uh, could a new Ice Age spell the end of the world as we know it? Well, yeah, sure. What is an Ice Age? An ice age, I mean, who the fuck, who, I don't need that. I know what an ice age is. What causes it? Yeah, yeah. I just want to know what happens. Are we due? What happens if there's another ice age? This is the interesting part. Yeah. We have delayed the onset of the next ice age for now, I guess with global warming. But if another one came, it would have to be pretty big. It would have pretty big consequences for human civilization. Uh, besides the fact that it would be an awful lot colder. Wait. Okay, maybe I don't understand as much about Ice Ages as I thought, because I didn't know it was going to get colder yeah, during the Ice Age. What? I know. I thought... I, th- I, didn't, I didn't know that. I thought it just there was, like, more ice. I didn't Hot know. ice. Yeah. I thought that was the whole point. It's like, things stay the same temperature, but, you know, I thought that what had happened was, like, the, f- the limit on what when water freezes is raised... So, you know, water freezes at like 80 degrees. So yeah. This totally reframes what I thought about an ice age. Mind blown. Uh, huge regions where hundreds of millions. Of, <laughs> I hope no one thinks that's literal. Hundreds of millions of people live will become completely uninhabitable. Cue the DFF subreddit right now. Oh, my God. These guys thought that ice was going to get hot for the ice age. What a, what a bunch <laughs> of retards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even the, uh, we still live in an ice age, dude. Uh, they'd be covered in thick ice sheets and subject to an inhospitable climate. <laughs> uh, assuming it was uh, similar to the last well, one. Well, TJ, do you know we currently live in an ice age? Do you, do you know that that's still actively going on? Uh, not according to this. We are actually. So whoever wrote this article is a fucking moron. Not according to this. You know, you know what's funny? Uh, I actually know that because me and Stevie had an argument about it. Stevie's like, no. And I'm like, Stevie's dumb. I'm going to win this argument. And he was actually right, so... Damn oh, shit. <laughs> well, that's, that's we're talking I, about a real ice age, oh, not some faggoty. The oh, Roland, it's technically an the ice Roland age. Emmerich ice age. I, I got you. Uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, ma- woolly mammoths and cavemen come raiding all the cities. Saber two tigers. Saber two yeah. tigers are running <laughs> they, around they New York. I don't see how the ice age is going to bring back extinct what? species. Yeah, that's, that's part to. of the ice age. Is it? Yeah, those species. Wow, I'm just, learning a lot about ice age. They hibernate in the ice, you know, in the Wait. poles until the ice covers most of the planet, and then they emerge from their icy tombs to oh, wreak shit. havoc upon humanity. Uh, there'd be a lot less agriculture land available, so it'd be very difficult to support the human population. That's kind of good. You know, we needed a little reduction. And the physical shape of the continents uh, would look completely different across the whole planet. So they're talking about a real ice age here, not whatever Scotty's talking about, which is just something like, yeah, it's technically an ice age. 
A huge drop in sea levels. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Of up to, I mean, some of the ten of the hottest years on record have been fucking in the last fucking you know. I don't few know decades. what. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what the criteria for an ice age is, TJ. I'm just telling you what I. Read. I'll tell you what my criteria for an ice age is. A bunch of fucking ice. Uh, uh, an over the top Hollywood scenario is your fucking criteria, TJ. Yes. Yes. You fucking ignorant piece and of shit. Create new areas of land. Blah blah blah. Ocean ports would no longer be on the ocean. Well, no shit. Anyone wanting water views would need to ro- relocate larger. So this is like, you know, it just, you know, change what the surface of the earth even looked like. Dude. It'd be crazy. This, you- this is how the Ice Age would start, Scotty. All right. Some dude is walking with his girlfriend in no, New York City. No, it starts with that little squirrel trying to crack No, it. no, you're wrong. Some dude is walking with his girlfriend in New York City, right? Mm-hmm. And, he's, and she's like, God, it's so cold. And he's like, I know. I've lived here my whole life, and I've never experienced cold like this. And then all of a sudden... Over the eerie nighttime streets, he hears like like one of those horns made out of a sheep's horn being blown. And then a fucking just herd of rampaging fucking mastodons being ridden by <laughs> giant fucking cavemen with big lumpy brows and clubs and shit come riding down the streets, dude. The Ice Age is here! Uh, I like Paul's Ice Age. I think I, I'd like actually like that to happen. Maybe yeah. Paul's Ice Age the, on ice. The women of the tribe are all riding saber tooth cats with nets and bows and arrows and shit. Dude, it's over. We're fucked. I can't wait. Uh, here's a cool one. Rogue black hole. The rogue black hole just appears, dude. Rogue black. It, it, just, it just shows hole. up. It's like, what's up? Uh. My, if a rogue, my fucking mass is greater than yours, bitch. If a rogue black hole wandered into our solar system, approximately how long would we have until total annihilation? That's the question. That's a good question. And uh, here's a fucking person who's answering. I don't know what their qualifications are, but we're just going to assume they know everything. Sure. They're smart, dude. That depends immensely. See, they use the word immensely. They know. Definitely a smart person. On the circumstances, but given some reasonable assumptions, the biggest danger would be radiation, and we'd have a fair chance of surviving the whole thing. Cool. God damn it. Another known, one? Known black holes range in mass from about four times the sun to billions of times bigger. I assume you're talking about something around the low end of that scale. So let's say 10 solar masses. That means its event horizon is around 60 kilometers across. Yet, yes, you read that light that right. It's less than 40 miles across. Black uh, holes are weird. Note that there is no way the thing is hanging around. The entire solar system is a fraction of its mass. It just zooms through and out the other side. Since it's a rogue, we can assume that it's from a different kinematic group than the sun and thus probably has a relative velocity of tens of thousands of kilometers per second that means it would take days to months to travel uh one au i don't know what an au is astrometric unit cool let's also let's say arbitrarily that it's going two aus uh a month Um, relative to us that means we can expect it to be somewhere inside neptune's orbit for uh, some time on the order of a year or two, assuming that we're using that as uh, the border of the solar system. Or if it's as fast as a hypervelocity star, it could just be a month or so. The chances of it hitting anything are minuscule. Space is too big, and going on the event horizon alone, the thing is tiny. So the main damage it does is by perturbing the orbits of the planets. In other words, the fact that it's a black hole doesn't really matter. It's just a massive object, and at that distance we're considering, we can use rough Newtonian approximations for its gravity. For the short term, the planet we care about most is, of course, the Earth. I don't know about it. I'm kind of a Jupiter fan, but whatever. The way it messes with the Earth's orbit is that uh, its gravitational forces on the Earth and Sun are different. Uh, if it's about... I'm sorry. If it's more than about 10 AU away, those differences are pretty minor. Our orbit would end up slightly non-circular, but the resulting global seasons would probably be survivable. This is gay. You know, I, I like the ones where it gets nice and close to You want to the us. fucking black hole where I the mean, fucking Earth is sucked into the fucking black hole, no, dude. I mean, I saw this one thing where, like, it gets close to our sun and it starts, like, sucking out our sun and shit, like, sucking it dry. I saw this other one where it, like, sucks the Earth's atmosphere clean off the fucking Earth. That was did pretty you, neat. Did you see the one where people at the equator fall into the sky, too? Yes. Yeah. They fall into the sky. What's this lame-ass, like, yeah, it might fuck with our orbit a well, little, but probably it, ain't gonna... It, it might slightly alter the orbit of the Earth. Uh, it'd probably be survivable, though. No! 
Boo! I want death and destruction to me. I mean, you'd probably still get plenty of that. I mean, destroy if, everything, dude. If, if it if it wobbled dude, how the long? earth and it messed with our seasons and shit, it would throw everything. Well, let's into be chaos. honest. How, how long? Right, hold on. How long do we have a black hole fucking on, disaster I, movie? I skimmed through this article. It says, uh, if by bad luck the black hole did come close enough to anything to swallow it up, I suspect the resulting radiation. As whatever it was spiraled in and superheated, though to I'm mean, sorry, superheated could be enough to sterilize the Earth. My very very rough back of the envelope calculations are that this could begin to be scary. As in, don't go outside at the wrong time. If that anything weighed more than about ten whatevers, uh, there are hundreds of asteroids which weigh more than that, and my calculations could easily be off by several orders of magnitude. Well, quit fucking, you know, I'm sure your calculations, my calculations are fine, all right? are not correct. This is my just yeah, like rough back of the envelope calculations, God, but I'm, I'm thinking that... What are the chances of it swallowing something sizable? That's where my rough estimate breaks down. I can't easily figure it out. Well, fucking what good are you then? Get out of here. Yeah, we just don't know, They man. don't fucking know, dude. You cock-sucking motherfucker. You should end the I don't like it. The today. black hole shows up, it sucks the earth into it, and we're all fucking dead. The end. Enter the event horizon, TJ. Yeah, hell, like a, yes. Like a then big go black to hell. vacuum, it just shows up and sucks our atmosphere. Starts vampiring our sun. <laughs> Black I hole. drink your milkshake. A All film right. by Roland Emmerich. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Rogue Black. Oh, that's a good title. Yep. Wait, no, that might. Whoa, th- Paul. From, how about, how about, how about whoa, whoa. from the black? Whoa. With Chris Rock as the black hole. <laughs> Man, what the fuck? <laughs> wow. That was a racist impression. <laughs> Sorry. Jesus, Paul. <laughs> I did my all right, best. so here's one that I never, um, you know, all these other ones I'd kind of heard We'd a little heard bit about. Him. Obviously, we're not experts in any of this stuff, but this Fuck one's no. kind of crazy. This is one I never heard of the before. The algae apocalypse, dude. A plausible end of the world scenario you probably never thought of. You're right. I did. I never did. You've seen the world end with fire, earthquakes, and what the fuck in movies like 2012 and The Core. The Core. But to find out about truly hot, horrific, plausible scenarios, you need to ask a scientist. We talked to Caltech's Joe... Ah, uh, man, this this episode is full of fucking shit I can't pronounce. Gel... Kirschvink? Kirschvink? I am Joe Kirschvink. Kirschvinkel. A geobiologist who studies the ancient history of life and mass death. Cool. Whoa, that's, that's metal. Pretty me- that's yeah, that's fucking really metal. metal. Yeah, me- he what gave us study? a nightmare scenario mass where death. one evolutionary shift in ocean microbes leaves humans unable to breathe. Kirschvink is an expert in one of the uh, most dramatic transformations that's ever shaken up our planet. You may not realize this, but for almost 2 billion years of the 4.5 billion year history of the Earth, our planet's atmosphere was dominated by methane and other greenhouse gases. Cool. There was no free oxygen, and therefore no life as we know it could survive. But then about 2.35 billion years ago, microbes called cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae, began to produce free oxygen as a byproduct of the photosynthesis process. The algae did this by breaking apart water molecules during their digestive process, freeing the O, oxygen, from H2O, water. As a result, these cyanobacteria poisoned the world. At least that's how it would have seemed to all the microbes around them, known as uh, stromatolites, who breathed methane. Suddenly, all the oxygen in the, it was in the air, and the stromatolites began to die out. Eventually, the oxygen-based atmosphere allowed life as we know it, including humans, to evolve over the dead bodies of those methane-breathing breathing stromatolites. Um, so... That's the backstory. The thing we really aren't the thing is we really aren't sure what caused the cyanobacteria to start photosynthesizing and throwing off that free oxygen in the first place. And there's no reason such an environmental shift couldn't happen again with equally disastrous results for life on Earth. Here's my nightmare scenario, uh, Kirschvink began, and it really is a nightmare. It's chemically unreasonable, but I suppose the microbes living 2.35 billion years ago would have said the same thing about oxygen. This guy's stupid. They 
wouldn't have said anything. Yeah, because microbes they can't, can't microbes talk. don't even talk. Microbes can't even. This guy ain't no it. fucking smart scientist. We smarter than him. This dipshit went to school for eight to twelve years and don't even know that a microbe can't talk. Hey, you know <laughs> how many times you've been you've been sitting around? You're like, you know, hey man, I was talking to this microbe the other day and he told never, no, never happens because microbes uh-uh. don't fucking talk. Yeah, the other day I was looking for my car keys and I'm like, where are my car keys? And this microbe goes, I saw him under the couch. <laughs> what a retard. What a fucking, fucking maroon. idiot. All right. Um, but I suppose the microbe's living, blah, blah, blah. Warning to, war, warming to the topic, he spun out micro, uh, microbial death tale. Let's say that there's some damn diatome that learns to grab a photon and take salt. I'm going to just cut to Paul for a second with the mention of the word salt. No. No. It can't. Uh, Salt, if you recall, your basic chemistry is an NaCl, whatever the fuck. I guess I never took basic chemistry. Or sodium chloride. The diatome breaks this in half, leaving a sodium metal, which Kirschvink says it could store in a little organelle. And instead of releasing free oxygen as a byproduct, this new diatome releases chlorine gas, uh-huh. a deadly poison. Sweet. You have chlorine gas poisoning the atmosphere, Kirschvink, uh, Kirschvink concludes. It would do to us what oxygen did to the juicy stromatolites. Juicy? Yeah, he said <laughs> they were juicy? Yes, juicy. they were juicy, dude. Could such a scenario come to pass? It's just one small change in the metabolic pathways of the diatome, Kirschvink noted. Of course, there is no known evolutionary advantage to such a shift taking place, but then again, there is no known advantage to cyanobacteria developing a metabolism that farted out oxygen 2.35 billion years ago either. So next time you're looking for a doomsday scenario, consider the humble diatome. Man, this one would be pretty cool, dude. Death by fucking algae. Yep. I wish he would get it. I, I wish he got into uh, how lo- how I mean like how much time would we have? Like how long would it take to saturate? Dude, that's, like, that's like as close to the happening the Earth with enough chlorine gas. I mean, would we even know? That's the thing. Like, would we even know till it was too late? Dude, remember that terrible movie, The Happening, TJ? This is like the closest thing I can think to uh, that actually coming true. The algae to, rebels, dude. To it actually happening. Oh shit! Wow, you just except shook the in the world. movie, the plants like they could actually understand people to some degree. I guess what? Well, yeah, that was weird. Mark, Mark Wahlberg's like, we gotta take a piss. We're just stopping in to take a piss. Sorry, don't hurt us. We, we respect you. We love you, plants. We love you, plants. What? No. <laughs> oh, it's made of plastic. I'm a fucking oh, that's right. man. <laughs> when he goes into the house and the woman's like crazy. You're like, going to kill me. What? No. no. What? Not me. I, Mark Wahlberg? Kill you? And of course, he, he then later kills her. Well, she went crazy, so, you know. I mean, he kills her, though. Yeah. She's dead. It was weird, because th- at the beginning of the movie, the plants made them kill themselves, but then later in the movie, it made them go crazy and kill other people, so. Yeah. The, the plants changed their mind. At first, they're all like, die, and then they're like, let's make them do their own dirty work. Let's make them kill instead. Kill. Kill. There's a, there's a much better movie about uh, fucking plants coming to life and killing people anyway. Oh, yeah, dude. Little well, shop, little shop. Little but shop, but I was thinking of the day of the Triffids too, dude. I never even heard of the that. The day of the Triffids. Dun dun dun. It's like one of those fifties schlock horror movies. What like is a, it? A comet comes down, and it's got this plant life on it, but they're trees that can like uproot themselves and walk around, and they've got these like pussies on their face that a tongue comes out of, and it, that's how they kill you. Cool. Whoa, dude. Yeah. The day of the Triffids. Day of the Triffids. Kind of different than what we're talking about, but still kind of interesting. The fucking algae starts pumping out chlorine gas, TJ. (laughs) It could happen, dude. It could happen. It's potential. That's pretty much what you hear with all these things. It could happen. It will happen. It should happen. It will. It could happen. It's going to turn your hair green, TJ, like like when you're swimming in a chlorinated swimming pool for too long. Remember there was that uh, furry convention that someone tr- uh, tried to uh, kill the furries with chlorine? Maybe oh, maybe God. it was a diatome, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe there was a, some fucking crazy diatomes there that were like, you know what? Time to fucking produce chlorine. Dude, they were like, let's go check on humanity and see how they're doing. Advanced scouts, dude. The, they yeah. just happen to pop up at a furry convention. They're like, what the fuck? All right, start synthesizing salt now. Time to eat the salt and fucking re- produce fucking chlorine gas. Dude, 
They're just the first wave. They're they're testing our defenses, and they see that we're already weak. They're dude. dressing up in weird animal costumes yeah. and yiffing with each they're other. They're doing what we do. They're they're experimenting on the furries amongst us, dude. Mm-hmm. They are man. like, yeah, these aren't real humans. We'll do we'll we'll do our chlorine test on these furries first. Sounds like a legit idea. Sounds like a legit idea. All right. Uh, obviously, uh, normally we don't tell you guys what we're going to do for our patron-only episodes in advance. We don't ever really tell you what we're doing in advance, but um, I think it's pretty obvious from discussions we've had here that uh, this is not complete. We are going to be doing an episode for patrons only um, on Friday. The Supernatural, That dude. concerns supernatural means of the world to end, and also man-made ways, like you know World War Three or a man-made virus or some other crazy stuff. Yeah. You'll learn all about it this Friday. If you're a patron, if you're not, then you the can fucking go fuck yourself. The AI takeover, dude. Fuck yourself. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. This was a satisfying episode. Paul's happy because he likes thinking about the death of all things. Except for that last one where the where the 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 diatome stole all my salt. I don't like that. Yeah, it's okay, Paul. You'll be the only human that survives. And I think it's kind of cool that it would be death by salt, though. Maybe they would like worship me because I'm the saltiest being on the planet. They just eat you. All salt flows forth from the salt lord. Paul just fucking evaporates into chlorine gas. <laughs> I turn into like a big fat version of that dude from the new uh, fucking Mad Max movie. I'm just like, yes, my diatoms, ride forth, bring me the Twinkies, you know, or whatever the fuck. It'd be great. Maybe. The salt Twinkies, dude. I think that you would just be dro- dropped into a vat of diatoms and fucking... Consumed. You know, well, maybe that's how they find turn me. Into a giant they eventually get sick of, of my, my, my tyrannical ways, and so they just eat me. They consume me. But for a while, I'll get to command the diatome hordes. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> diatome hordes. <laughs> yes. Dude. Yes. I am king of the algae. <laughs> this pool has gotten slimy. It's time for some chlorine. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Put some chlorine dude, in that, the gene pool. I'll tell you what, dude. There be some. Cl- there be some clean ass pools in the world. Yeah, especially that human gene pool, totally wiped. Whoa, out. Whoa, TJ. For last time, Hitler. Now you fucking eugenics shit is getting a little Who crazy. Who do you think the hottest dude in the world is, Hitler? TJ? Hitler. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about chlorine gas cleaning the gene pool. Like, TJ, are you secretly a fucking Nazi, dude? I mean, come on. Just give a little Zyklon B, guys. <laughs> Clean the dream pool. <laughs> hey, come on. We're up to Zyklon fucking Z now. Zyklon Z. Yeah, it turns people into it turns them into Jewish zombies. <laughs> what? That do the our golem. Nazi bidding. The golem. I mean, that do their Nazi bidding. Not I'll our Nazi give you bidding. one shekel for two brains. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Goyim? See, he's more anti-Semitic than I am. What? No, he's not. All right, the end. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, everybody.